Okay, so with everything we've talked about so far, how we discussed or started the day yesterday, hormones, what is the biggest categorical differentiation between the hormones that we've talked about in class? Okay, so what would be some, the, the major characteristic of a non-steroid hormone? Yeah, it's, it's made of proteins, okay? And how's that different from a steroid hormone then? It's composed of lipids, mainly the, uh, the compound cholesterol. Now, why is that an advantage that steroid hormones like what? What would an example be? That's one, and estrogen's the, estrogen is the other. That's correct. Those are steroid hormones, so they are based off of the uh, compound uh, cholesterol. They're composed of lipids, so why is that chemically significant? Will they dissolve in water? No, so that means they can be carried through what? Very easily. They can be carried through the bloodstream very easily. Non-steroid hormones can as well, but typically the difference between those is a lot of the non-steroid hormones work on what we call first and second messenger mechanism. Okay, so that's the main categorical difference between the two. Then we started to move on talking about a postglandulin. Okay, which can occur in the heart the brain, and I, I think we, where else might have we said, uh, kidneys was another one. But the best example that was not, it was intentionally left off here, was which organ? Because it was something that we had talked about in class and something, I always say it's something that you know, you just don't realize you know it until you ask maybe the right question. So what organ was that yesterday in reference to this? Because it's something that is secreted by that organ. It's a very localized, okay, very localized effect. It's not stored in this organ. It's secreted by it, and it has an effect on that organ only. Because typically a lot of these hormones, like dealing with blood sugar levels, it's secreted by the pancreas and then sent through the bloodstream to that of the liver. So that's not a postglandin, and it doesn't have a localized effect on that organ only. It has effect on a different one. A postglandulin is different. The stomach, that's right. There's two hormones. We talked about them yesterday. Again, going way back to probably, what, maybe September 8th, 9th. those are the two. And their effect is they either, the cholestochanin or the gastrin, one starts the acid production, then the other one uh, halts it. And it has to be that way because if you continue to produce that acid that goes into your small intestine, uh, that, that, uh, that's probably not a, a very good uh, uh, outcome for that person. It's not like it's going to be life altering, but probably can lead to uh, certain types of infection. I mean, especially, uh, I think peritonitis might be the, the major one. We're starting to poke little tiny holes into that of your intestine, and that seeps out into your abdominal cavity, and then probably has to be drained. It's going to become infected, and, and that, that could probably be pretty dangerous. Okay. So as we move on, why, why would we say that probably the liver is the most important gland for breaking down many hormones? 
because typically we consider hormones being steroid based or lipid based, but that's not what all hormones are made of. From that chapter of 17, what are some major functions of that liver? Think about that for just a moment. And I'm sure those in the gallery sitting at home saying, I know, I know, I know, I, I just can't say anything because this is not in real time. Was that what it was like when you're an elementary student? Uh, students, the teacher asks a question. And you always have that annoying student goes, I know, I know. No? Is it the person who says it's probably the one that wasn't? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. So this gland, why is that? have such a profound effect on non-steroid hormones. You gotta remember, what are non-steroid hormones made of? Right, okay? And proteins are also enzymes, okay? So if that's the case, if we go all the way back to, again, back to chapter 17, you were responsible for knowing what the functions of the liver were, okay? And there were, you, I think there were three of them we wanted you to know. In this case, two of them, okay? What happens is your liver will produce these enzymes that will break down these different types of hormones so you can get them out of your body, okay? And then another function was it produces clotting factors. I don't know if you remember that material from way back then or back when, but those were two of the three functions. And I, I think the other one uh, maybe was alters enzymes because that's really what your, your liver does. It will change different types of components of enzymes to fit what the body actually needs. And that is why if someone needs a liver transplant, that's, uh, that, that's pretty serious stuff, okay? One of the reasons that we can maybe make that intuitive leap, the, the kidneys are very important too, but you can prolong someone long enough with this process to where hopefully they can get a kidney transplant. But does anyone know what it is where you actually go through the process of cleaning your blood? It's a machine that does it rather than your own kidneys. Starts with the letter D. Yes, they have to go through dialysis. And if, if I'm not mistaken, I would be led to believe if you go to an outpatient clinic, maybe three or four hours of just sitting there and letting your blood be pumped through this machine that filters it, which normally your kidney is supposed to do. But unfortunately, sometimes it just malfunction or maybe um, become diseased or, or something to, to that effect. Okay, so as we move forward, when it says these hormones are precisely regulated, probably the, the only thing or only organ that can probably do that is way upstairs. Yeah, your brain, your central nervous system will possibly control these. And it's probably the levels in the blood that would regulate this, but that's still something that's sensed in the blood level, or excuse me, in your bloodstream by your brain. Okay. Here. We'll go ahead and do this one and then briefly um, talk about the pituitary gland and then that will be uh, probably it for today.
Actually, we'll probably start with the pituitary gland tomorrow. I think that would probably make more sense. We'll try to put an illustration up on the board to, to help, help put what we're saying here into context to try to make sense. What was maybe one of your favorite activities out on the playground on types of equipment? Do you, can you remember that far back, what you might have worked on, or not worked on, but played on back then? Of course, we're talking probably eight to nine years ago. <coughs> Nobody? Nothing? Yeah. What was your favorite playground equipment that you always wanted to be on outside? Again, we're talking about, like I said, eight or nine years ago, putting you back into probably third or fourth grade. Was the teeter-totter one of them? They took it away? Dang it. That stinks. Did you ruin it or what? See, if, if you were really good, you'd try to make a catapult out of that and just propel someone like 20 feet up in the air. But I would suggest you don't share that bit of information with elementary students. <laughs> okay. Does everyone have this information that wants it? Okay. We're going to try to make sense of this. So... Because I think having a visual depiction of this will probably be way more beneficial. Okay. So. Okay. Sometimes I think I just leave this stuff up here to do recruiting for next year. Because it looks like it's just so much fun. Now say the right words so you don't scare anybody away. Of course this is fun. Yep. See? But you would have agreed with that, right? Okay. I guess I was starting to erase this while this just popped in my mind. I guess you could say that This is the key to all your success because this is a what? It's a key tone. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, we'll keep going. <laughs> See, you know this stuff, you just don't realize you know. Okay, we're talking about this teeter totter. Okay. Maybe just a little longer. Okay, so the main idea inside your bloodstream is to keep this at a normal level. What do you suppose that might stand for that we just talked about? Blood sugar levels. Okay, so what happens is, let's say, okay, if that drops down okay so now your blood sugar levels have gone down okay and for for most of us it's very easy to to accommodate for that one you can just grab a sugared beverage but your body doesn't need to do that what can happen is if this goes down 
we want that level to go back up to a normal aspect like it did on this teeter-totter. Okay, so store it inside your body. You got a really, really long carbohydrate, but your body can't metabolize this because it's just too big. It does start with a G because all of these links GC stands for what do you think? And these are all glucose molecules. Okay? So this is a very, very vital form of sugar that we can use, but we can't metabolize it or digest it or utilize it in this form. Like I said, it's just too big. So there's a hormone that will break this down. So this whole long unit is called glycogen, a very large carbohydrate. Again, it's just too big to pass across the cell membrane. So what happens, we've got a hormone called glucagon. So your body's, your brain's going to sense that, is going to say, oh my, our blood sugar levels are too low. So what's going to happen is this hormone has an effect on the liver, but it's not produced by the liver. It must be produced by something else to go through the bloodstream to get to the liver. What gland might that be that deals with sugar metabolism? And it's about right here. Your liver's here, this organ's right below the stomach. So if something will help raise blood sugar levels, what actually helps it go down? One we said if someone has diabetes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that one over here. Maybe this will help then. So on this side, what happens, that glucagon that is produced and excreted, secreted by the pancreas, heads to the liver, and what's it going to do to this glycogen? One way to look at how many of you actually play uh, eight ball or billiards or probably have before? You know, you got your cue stick or I don't, I don't know if this makes me left-handed. I guess maybe a lot of you go like this. Okay? So at the when you start the game, okay, you take that cue ball, would, I, we just call it, who's going to break? Is that still the common phrase? Who's going to break the, the, the rack, you could say. So the cue ball is kind of like breaking the rack. It's going to hit this, this glucagon is going to hit this glycogen and just shatter this apart. And what's going to happen is now you have all of these glucose molecules just floating freely in the bloodstream now. So this is going to help raise that blood sugar level back up to normal. Okay. So this is now done. We've got it back up to normal. Okay. Well, what happens, well, what about if this gets to be too high? Okay. Well, if we have all of these glucose molecules in here, in your bloodstream again. I guess it would help if I made them the same size, but one of two things that that insulin will do to help bring that teeter-totter back down. One, that insulin is going to tell your cells, hey, take the sugar in and burn it. Okay? We we'll say burn it, burn it for energy. Okay? That's one thing this insulin can do. But what else might it be able to do? Look on your other side. It can change that glucose from a monomer 
back into a very large polymer. And that polymer was what on the other side? Glycogen. So what this insulin can do, you can tell your cells to either burn this or link them back up together into a chain. And what that will do is it pulls the blood sugar levels back out of the bloodstream to go back down to a normal level. So these two hormones are in competition. Well, I wouldn't say they're in competition with one another. They just have contrasting effects. Okay. So that is how your blood sugar levels are monitored and dealt with in your body. And then once we start hooking these together, again, we've got glycogen again. Okay. Left outside, is that, are we good? Left middle, right outside, right outside, <laughs> right outside. You didn't think I forgot, did you? Well, we are getting older, so it is possible. All right, so, okay, that's all we'll do for today. Very important concept, this right here. Hopefully it made sense, so we will catch up to you next time.